Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Curriculum and Instruction Committee. Today is August 13th, and it is 6.01. Um, we can start with getting a roll call. Uh, Connor Kurtz, Chairman. Carol Boyd. Mary Beth Torsha, Superintendent. Rich Martino, and I, I'd like to apologize to everyone. I have to leave at 6.45 to go to an Amity Township meeting. Oh, that's right. So I want everybody to realize I wasn't just walking out. <laughs> Mary Beth Kiesel, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. I'm Rob Hurley, Coordinator of Instructional Services. Tom Heichel, uh, High School Principal. All right, great. Uh, procedures for public participation. There's currently no public here, but if any public were to show up, they would have their three minutes at the podium. All right, moving on to old business. School board student representative. This has been something that we've been talking about for a little bit. I don't know if it's been on this committee. I think we did speak about it um, in the past not too long ago. Um, but we were looking tonight to try to um, hammer out some I don't know if qualifications is the right word, but how the uh, student would be selected. Um, joining us is Jenny Rexroad and Megan Weber for the first time at the table. So, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Um, we're on old business right now. We just got started talking about a school board student representative that we'd like to add, uh, or that we may add. Um, Mr. Martino, you've talked about this. Is there anything you'd like to start off with? Well, I have some thoughts, and, and since we added it to the agenda, I had talked to Mrs. Torsha that Pottstown School District and O.J. Roberts School District both do have a student representative on the school board, and rather than try to reinvent the wheel, if we find out what they're doing and just modify it to our needs, you know, that should, that should quicken things up. And the only thing I would like to add to that is at one of the school board meetings, somebody mentioned that while well, you're taking a student on a school night and keeping them out till whatever time the meeting's over. So my suggestion is that since they can't vote, we make the committee of the whole meeting the mandatory meeting for the, the student representative and the voting meeting voluntary if they want to come that's up to them and their parents but rather than mandating so I mean that's just a thought now just to be clear for the sake of the public maybe listening to the tape and everybody else I guess obviously the student board member would not have a vote on the board but they would be able to speak um, their opinion I guess it's a question of either when asked by the board or when um, whenever they, they choose it's something I guess for us to work out um, but in terms of a time frame for getting this position established, does anybody have any thoughts as to when they would like that to be, whether it be the beginning of the school year or the December reorganization meeting? I, I personally, because we start talking about it back in December, right, I'd like to see it be as soon as we can come up with a criteria that we can get the entire board to approve. And then you were talking about, and I agree, having the position voted on, so you'd have to have an election. the election and then have the person seated, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And even what even what we're saying about the Committee of the Whole, yeah, they don't have a vote, but I think on every Committee of the Whole agenda, we could have five minutes or so, or, or just a slot for the student representative to bring out anything that, that they feel is pertinent. Yeah. I did ask Mary Beth Kiesel to make a phone call to O&J, and I believe she does have some information to share with the committee tonight. So go ahead. The way they do it at O&J is they have the president of the student mm -hmm. council represent the student body. And that president uh, coordinates or communicates with each principal at the different school and just collects some information such as, you know, any celebrations <coughs> or things that they wanted to bring recognition to. And then he brings that to the board meeting. Um, he goes to each board meeting, he or she, and really does not have any other responsibilities other than just to relay these three or four bullets of information. It, it was O.N.J. Roberts actually got the idea from, I was at an O.N.J. Roberts school board meeting two or three years ago, and it was a, a young female. She was president of the student council. and I, I found it very impressive 
her ability to stand up and, and, and speak and because and, speaking in front of a group is tough for some people. And I thought then when we started discussing it here that that's a great idea. The only thing is when we when I first got elected, Connor was walking me through the high school and it was the teacher that handles the student government. Mm -hmm. And he felt that the president of the student government may be too busy, is that what he said? Something along those lines. Or may yeah. have too much on his plate already that maybe it needs to be another member. So I think that's something that, that the committee would need to work out is, should it be elected, which gives the, 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 the kids more input, and should it be restricted? See, I thought seniors, Connor thought possibly juniors mm -hmm. and seniors, yeah. and I, you know, I don't have strong I did a little bit of research. Student members will have no uh, non-voting status. The superintendent will provide an orientation for students, uh, for new student members, and provide a mentor. For the first year, two students, one junior, one senior, will be selected as student reps. The senior will have a one-year term. The junior will have a two-year term. In the second year, junior will be selected to serve a two-year term. All juniors and seniors are eligible to apply for the position. There's a questionnaire completed, an application developed by the uh, superintendent, and they actually interview with the committee on um, the board. What, to what the district board. is that? Just, I honestly don't know. I think it was Melton. I think it said Melton. It's, it's referred to as RSU here in this note, but I pulled it off of somewhere else. Just some thoughts. I mean, my thought on selection, <laughs> I think if you're going to purport to represent anybody, you should be elected. And that, that's the, that could be the president of the student council, provided that the president of the student council is elected. Um, among the whole school. That wasn't my case in high school. I don't know if it changed now. I think it should be, um, but there really wasn't much of a building level student government when I was in the high school. Um, There's something else here on what's expected of them. After. Sure. Regular attendance. They should prepare for all meetings by reviewing the materials beforehand and conducting necessary research to understand the issues, at least certain issues, I guess. They should know the ethics, board member ethics, they should review the policy manual, they should know a little bit about Robert's rules, and um, violent, violations of confidentiality. I guess there wouldn't be anything they'd be in that involved in right. confidential no. wise. Might be overkill, but it gives you an idea of what um, some thought that went into this position. Mm -hmm. No, that's good, I, and if, but there's, there's no intent to have them at executive sessions mm -hmm. say right, or anything right. like that, so they wouldn't be dealing with anything confidential. Right, they, we wouldn't be exposing them to anything confidential. And the merit for this, if it hasn't been stated, would be to get student opinion on board issues, as well as to give the student who's um, elected this position uh, some understanding, I guess, of what local government is like and the position mm -hmm. where they could actually. Uh, I think it's good outreach too for the board to show that we're Absolutely. interested in the community that we you know, serve. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question becomes: Where do we go from here? How do we make this happen other than just talking about it right now? Could we iron out what, what the... Can you uh, bring us a little bit more um, data to the next session and we can vote on it based on some things we, like how did Alan Jay do it? How did they decide? What's the process? They, just a it few more sounded ideas. like the... They just they were selected. They were the, the student council president. So the person who was the oh, student exactly. council president was appointed as the school board representative. Then for them, has I, anyone talked to Bob I, I recently started this. Yeah, and I, I, um, I can follow up. I did not between our conversation on Monday and today. I did not follow up with Potsdam, but I'm trying to recollect from my conversation when I did talk to him. I believe that it was an elected position. And that there were also, um, and you can help me out here, there were also alternates because when they created the position, they, ex they expected somebody to always be there. And, and knowing that you know, students are involved with things, that mm -hmm. if you couldn't make it, then it's your responsibility to get the alternate to be in attendance. That's actually what they have in this, too. Okay. And they have an overlapping term so that there's someone always available to right. train the next one coming in. Right. I, I really like this, personally. I also like it as an interview process as opposed to an election so it doesn't become a popularity contest at the school. Mm -hmm. And it make, helps the kids step up to with an interview process, how to present yourself. 
And maybe we do go through an application process so that, you know, those kids that are applying really are interested in this and level. Through. You know, I think right. that every, every yeah. student who applies to run or be a little meeting maybe with the building principal or even with you, Mrs. Torsha, mm -hmm. or even the board president. I'll try um, to get this application if you want. That would be great. I, I mean, I think we should determine how we want to get this information out to the students. What are your thoughts as the... I've seen it done both ways. I personally like junior, senior. Right. I, I like that idea. I like the idea of a questionnaire or an application process like a National Honor Society to stop anybody from thinking it's a joke. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of that the individuals having to come before a committee of one or two or three board members and talking, just like when... Why do you want to do this, you know, right, et cetera. Same idea as if uh, when a school board member leaves during their term, Somebody, they mm -hmm. apply and they get interviewed by the board, something like that. It helps if somebody's failing, you always guarantee somebody. I like the overlap, I like the idea of junior and senior. Absolutely. And if it's an interviewing process where they come before us in an informal session like this, they get to vet whether they really yeah. like this or not. Maybe they're too scared to do it. Maybe they enjoy it more than they realize. Kind of mocks what will happen in a you know, full and I think whatever interview process we can, whatever procedure we came up with that included an interview process, I think it's the curriculum committee that would do the interviewing. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah, I just, I just always felt that that process had to always work out much better, and, and because uh, in some cases the two of them, one of them said, "Okay, I'll take the elementary and be able to report on the elementary." The other one took the secondary and reported on the secondary. So they're both involved. And it does, it's important to make it, even though they are high school students on the board, to make sure that when they're reporting that all of the levels are being discussed. And it's, and it's not just a high school discussion. That's really important. And that's where I've seen mm -hmm. some. Bring I've seen a couple times yeah, it looks like that, idea. and it's not good. But that's what, yeah. what Mary Beth said. They, they interact with all the principals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we, what we, go ahead, Megan, I'm sorry. Okay. And aren't there councils at every building, like in the yes. middle school, so they could go to their meetings mm -hmm. and be able to go and see mm -hmm. them and get the information that way? Yeah. And we can get it out, we can get, you know, the information mm -hmm. right out through our social studies department. Right. It would mm -hmm. be a requirement as soon as we get the okay of the process. All right, all social studies teachers in their social studies classes take this day yeah. in your user, with your juniors and seniors and, and lay it out. And then here's the applications if you're interested in it. And, yeah. and then put that information on, on high school website. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. See, I, I'll tell you why I think this is important. I mean, my stepdaughter graduated from Daniel Boone in 2009. So she's somewhat familiar with the school, even though in five years things change. Mr. Kurtz graduated not too long ago. But even, so I rely on Mr. Kurtz for a lot of saying, okay, from a student standpoint, what's going on here? But even that changes oh, over yeah. the course of time. And the board is going to do what the board does. You have nine people voting, and then they're going to decide what they do. And just like listening to members of the public who come up and voice their opinion, and the, the board either agrees or disagrees, but we know what at least the public that attends is thinking. But the decisions we make or the things we contemplate, we don't really know what the students think of it. Not that we would necessarily change because one student said, oh, I don't like that. But it, it's nice to hear how it impacts them. Yeah. So this is something the committee obviously wants to move forward with. Um, going back to deadlines, I know Mrs. Blake, you mentioned you wanted more information. Um, well, I know I'd be prepared oh, okay. to move on this personally, Good. but you Good. know, I'm, sounds like we're still. Better. Yeah, we're trying to figure out the best way to do it. Well, I'm thinking the application process is great. So I okay. think if we have an application to use as an example, perhaps, you know, maybe some of us, we don't need the whole committee perhaps to hash that out. We can say, here's what we're going to use. Look at it. Let us know if you're, what your thoughts are. And then we can bring that to the board and then. Do we need to bring the application to the board, or do we just well, need to bring the whole proposal moving the proposal forward would go to the, uh, the, of our process, and that we're going yeah, to be? I think the application would tell us, would give us a really good profile of what we're looking for in there. 
Right. Yeah, I think the, sure. what the entire board needs is is to, uh, what we decided on. The process is going to include an application. The process is going to include an interview. Right. The process right. is going to include a junior and a senior, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just the things we just talked about, right. what you read pretty much. And, and Now, could there be an issue, because all meetings of the board and the committees have to be held in public. If this committee interviewed the students, would that have to be held in public? No. How would we... Could it be an executive session? I don't know. I'm just wondering what no, the legal... No, I think, I think that we can just do that. But it's a non-voting position. Yeah. It's a non-voting position. It's not. It's something extra that we want to put into place. Um, I just want to make sure. Maybe yeah, those I can I can double-check that with Brian. I think that would be good yeah. because this person would be styled team. pretty much as a member of the board. Right. And they're going to have a platform. Um, I just want to make sure that we wouldn't be... Yeah, I, I will check with Brian. Um, is that an issue with doing the interviews in public? I mean, I'll tell you what, when we interviewed the last couple board members, the interview was kind of weak, you know, seriously. Yeah. I mean, would we ask them two questions and tell us about yourself and why you want to be on the board? Yeah. So I think this should be a little more detailed than that. Yeah. And I think the application will help yeah. with that anyway. Um, and I'll check with Pottstown to see what their process was okay. as well. Um, but it sounds to me like, you know, in O.J. Roberts, if they just selected the student government or the student council person, they just put them there. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'll double check to make well, sure that, that we don't. That, uh, that really right. Yeah. yeah, that was just a, an appointment. You're the student yeah. council Except president. You're automatically yeah. the representative on the school board. And I, I think I like what I'm hearing about this better. So I'll double check the legal aspects of what we have to do, but I think that all we need to present to the board is that we'd like to recommend um, voting on a school board student representative, and this is the process that we're going to take in order to, to select a candidate. I think some questions that might come from the board would be, when would the student be seated? That would be one, so if we could... I don't think we'd be able to seat them before October. October. I think that would be the earliest because the, the application time would have to be the first few weeks of school. For the interview, if it has to be public, it would have to be at earliest the voting meeting in September we yeah. wouldn't be able to do that at the committee of the whole and then well if it's going to be no you're going to do the interviews it could be the next curriculum meeting yeah. right that that if too it had to be right public. if it had to be public right so um but that still would be you know i'm thinking still we wouldn't have to see anybody and until october into their yeah you don't right. want to just throw yeah. too right they need to be September to get settled yeah Kind of like mid to late October. What's yeah. the hurry? Well, I was going to say, since it's so new, this is what I'm saying about these tables being so <laughs> I know. like this. Since it's so new, why don't we just say the first committee of the whole meeting in November? I mean, that's giving you September right. and October to, right. to get I the process in place and selection right. made. So you're saying interviews? No, so no. To, have have them to have them seated. To have them seated, okay. At the first yeah. committee of the whole meeting in November, and that gives you. The remainder of the month of September and the whole month of October. Every year, then that would be the, the process too for the next appointment. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, because every the, year, the junior this, would continue on, right? Right. The, and then the you're replacing starts. the senior the next year right. by another junior. Yeah. So we can, you know, kind of live with that routine. Yeah. You guys think there's that's some continuity? Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess we sh we'd have to codify that in our policies. I'll have to look and see if there was a, a policy okay, adopted yeah, as, and, uh, yeah. right. It looks and like and I hope not, this is because we're, yeah. we're going to go to a policy like with the Then that'll take longer. longer. Not going to make it by November. I mean, yeah, we could put it in place more or less informally and then enshrine it in policy oh, at a yeah. later date. Right, I mean, right, I right. wouldn't let the right. policy hold us up. I do have a question. If we're going to have a junior and a senior, who's actually sitting with the board? Well, that's another question I was going to get to. What will the student be, where will he be sitting, at the, he or she, at the table? Uh, will he be with the administration? Will he be in the front row of the audience? They're going to be a member of the board. Yeah, so at the, the table. table. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Only one, one is going to be. At the meetings. That's true, too. You could have one attend the committee, right. one at the voting. Of course, it's them. That, that would, that would. To, uh, collaborate on right. Yeah, that would first all having somebody. Well, what you could do is you could have the you could have the junior the voting meeting to understand. We just lost the lights in here, so one second here. There we go. 
Anyway, They're all charged up, ready to go. Like I was saying, we could we could have the junior perhaps attend the voting meeting to understand where the action actually takes place, and then once they become a senior and they're more used to the role, they could attend the committee of the whole, and that's where the discussion mostly happens. That could be yeah. one solution. I think we've given the administration administration enough um, guidance here for them to maybe come back yeah. next month. Yeah, we don't, with yeah. the, and there's the nothing to say that the the, the okay. Second person couldn't attend the meeting. No, just wouldn't be sitting yeah. at the board. Would, yeah. would you like the, the am, I, am I understanding that you would like to um, have us work on an application sometime between now and yeah, the next committee, and the next, the next and curriculum and instruction meeting, yeah. and then present the? the I would first. present okay. the application at the next committee of the whole meeting. I want to get this moved. If we can get the board to approve it earlier than that, they can begin the process. Actually, that being said, I mean the application yeah, isn't going to be available travel. until. You guys don't want to do it until September anyway. So we could approve it all in September. I at guess. the curriculum instruction and then have And then at the voting meeting, we could. Yeah. We could do it. We could tweak this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what if there, this committee needs to approve? I just, the final package is it's something we could approve yeah. just to make sure that everything is yeah. how we would like it after the administration puts it together before we're taking it to the full board. I don't think that's a bad idea. Well, I'll, sure I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you what I think is a bad idea about it. If your next curriculum and instruction committee is until mid-September. It'll be before the, well, no, we already have the date set. Curriculum instruction will be before the committee of the whole. Should be real quick through here. Yeah. Okay. And then right we can get it on the voting agenda to be approved. And then, I mean, that'll be at the end of September. And then announcements could be made. And if we're trying to get them seated by November, if you have the election in mid-October, then you have a little bit of time for some introduction um, and his directory meeting with Mrs. Torsha. I mean, oh, well, we're going to have to have the selection with the committee, and that could be at the October meeting if we have to have it in public, and if not, we can figure out a time. Okay. I think the time frame. So the directives for us is to get the application ready for the next curriculum instruction um, meeting to so that the committee can review it. And for us to find out the legality of the interview process with Mr. Subers, make sure that it can, does it have to be public versus can it be done privately, yeah. and then also to confirm policy whether or not a policy needs to. And, and to finalize exactly what the rules would be, how they okay. physically, what are you recommending where they should be? Seen? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are they going to alternate? Or that, you guys just kind of bring yeah, pretty much the total package. For our students? And that may involve more talking with OG, uh, OJ Roberts yeah. and Pottstown. Um, and of course, I'd be available for the following. Whatever you guys uh, came up with at this point would be acceptable. Uh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was clear yeah, I on what those you, four, those four yeah. things. Okay. I can, I think. Got that? I'll share my notes with you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Good. I'm really glad this is moving forward. All right. Uh, again, no public, so no public comment. Um, new business. It's on here is AP course editions, but this isn't really just about AP. Um, a few weeks ago, I received a message online from a uh, from a fellow 2012 Daniel Boone graduate, and he was asking a series of questions about school systems. And he asked, he sent this email to a bunch of teachers for his education class. And he had someone to meet too, and he asked if there's one thing you could change about a school system, what would it be? And I never really thought about that. And for at least one more year, I have the ability to change a school system. So I thought for a while about this. And I thought that if we could just prepare our students even more for life after graduation, whether that be college or um, the workforce or trade school, whatever that may be, if we can do that, I think we should do everything we can to make, our, to make Daniel Boone a leader um, in post-graduation preparation, almost. Um, and part of that, I think, is expanding AP classes and just instilling in our students a mindset, almost, that I want to work harder to achieve results that I didn't think I could. Um, not just settling into a routine that might be comfortable, but rather a routine that always challenges. And again, that's kind of a mindset thing, and mindsets are very difficult to change. And Mr. Henkel mentioned earlier 
at our uh, at, at the community feedback session for the strategic plan or the comprehensive plan that this needs to start at an elementary level. That's the key. And that is very important. I don't have as much experience personally at the elementary level. I guess I have just as much as any other person who went through oh, yeah, K to twelve. <laughs> but um, I mean most recently high school has been where my experience has been. But what are some ways even at the K to twelve level that we could we could really try to try to make that mindset stick. Does anybody have any suggestions? I know this isn't exactly AP course editions like it says on the agenda. Well, the, in, in our comprehensive plan meeting this morning, it did get me thinking about some things with regard to our students and those students who are trying to achieve and they hold their hat, especially at the elementary level. If you are identified as gifted, that is like the best thing next to sliced bread or you know ice cream. So those students who don't, you know, manage to have all meet all the criteria for that, um, somewhat get deflated a little yeah. bit. And I want to be able to keep them, you know, moving along. And I was thinking, you know, with what we have in place right now, and having a gifted teacher at the elementary level, and looking at our third, fourth, and fifth grade classes, and um, I'm targeting third, fourth, and fifth grade because. You're still learning so much in, in first and second grade and, and the social aspects and, and to try to make you think competitively about learning when you still can't really, you know, read maybe, um, you know, yeah. paragraphs or more than five, you know, don't want to add more frustration. So my thought was identifying third, fourth, and fifth graders that aren't, maybe they're gifted, but maybe they're not, but those kids who really want to accelerate in math, and I'm, I'm starting with math because... Okay. It's one of the areas that we want to keep growing. And um, letting them be pulled out a couple times a week out of the classroom to go to this teacher who's revered as, you know, the beep teacher who, you know, is known to have these great classes and be able to get that, that enrichment and yeah. being able to, to be given those things. And some criteria that I think I would look at is many times students achieve an advanced level based upon our PSSA score and they're put into a class with other students who are advanced or proficient but really acknowledge them because that advanced group is really not real real large um, right away and and maybe that would be one of the criteria or maybe we'd look at that in combination with you know what was your grades in third fourth and fifth grade coming up or you know just some different things to look at what makes you stick out not to I think that's all good but what about the students who may not be in that advanced group, who may be, I mean, the vast majority, I'm talking about the vast majority of students okay. in the middle. How can we instill in them a thirst for knowledge that really allows them to propel themselves? I'm not saying they're not going to need help, and even the advanced students are going to need help, too. Well, I was well, using, I was using this, this, this okay. figure as, like, this is where I want to go. This is, I, I want to go there. Okay. And so then I'm hoping that with the elementary right, children, see. they see, what do I have to do? Right. Well, you have to do your homework every night. You have to, you know, be doing these yeah. things, and then you get that opportunity. And, and maybe it could be a group that rotates. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen where students might have um, social problems, can't really read well behind in the writing in middle school, but they do have a gift mm -hmm. for math. Mm -hmm. And they're, we're able to pull that part of their excellence out. So right. it's not the whole package. Right. Yeah. They don't fit into gifted. But I think that's... Right. And I was just using the advance as, a, as, as a, a one area. but obviously, one area. Right, but, but obviously... For that to try and get right. everyone to find out. By the time they leave, my goal would be that they found the passion of right. their heart. At least one thing that they're good at and they're fired up about doing, you know, after high school. Right. I think that the electives that Mr. Henkel's put into place yeah. is raising the bar. And I think that the more of those that we can get into place, again, that's staff. So... Um, we have to we have to constantly look at what we can get the the kids excited about. Um, I think another thing that we should look at is somehow using cyber education to bring that foreign language back in because there's another area that we know that you know helps students to excel. Um, just kind of giving them some things and giving giving them an opportunity to experience education. And, and feel positive about it and get a little bit excited and then maybe it'll trigger over to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Because truly the middle is the hardest group. I mean, correct me if I'm, if you think differently, both, you know, Mary Beth and Rob, 
they are the hardest sometimes to get excited. Yeah, one of the things you try to do with the middle school, and we have this in place, and we have a very good program in terms of being is exploratory in nature by definition, and by having a wide range of electives in the middle level, kids get the opportunity to find is art your interest, um, is home economics your interest, is um, tech, technology education your interest. That's why they get to explore, that's why they have so many minor subjects right. in the middle level. Well, and something I read in the paper today that the Hamburg School District did with their STEM program and offering um, science labs at the elementary level. Oh. That would be a way of getting kids excited, yeah, and and then that starts at the elementary level, and then it it makes them look forward to you know the chemistry and the physics and and wanting to excel in those areas. So I'm going to pick um, the administrator's brain in the Hamburg school district to find out how they did it and what they were doing, um, what additional funds, and I know that they're you know that they're that they are restricted Megan. with some of the the things too. So I, I would I would like to try to. See what they're doing because and bring simple labs at right. that level. And Blazer Foundation is very excited about um, bringing the STEM program into the elementary level. Mary Beth, uh, when I was at teaching for Pequot Valley, we had the teacher who taught gifted was very interested in science, and she had some wiggle room in her schedule. And what she did was taught science. I forget how frequently it was to all the kids, and they were strictly lab-based activities. And it was so cute. The kids were so motivated and inspired. They wore lab coats and goggles, cool. and and they her nice. lessons were excellent. And, and were that's cool. something that's career readiness. Right. Really but I, but I, think, I think I think what you're talking about. I think I think what you're talking about is is the way to get the kids interested. Mm -hmm. I, and I've talked and I've talked I love that. In, in general and, and I talked to Tom in private that I think I had an excellent education. But I had college level chemistry and physics in high school and it was all academically taught. It was all book. Mm -hmm. Right. It was boring. Yeah. You know, I mean, learning all, all, mm -hmm. all the, the tables in, in chemistry and, and it, we the labs, especially at the elementary level, where it's, where it's hands on, mm -hmm. would generate enthusiasm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, you know, again, I'm going to target the three, four, and five, and, and we can eventually look at the younger group, and we certainly can do things at the middle level. But it would be easy. We have a lot of teachers um, at the elementary level who excel in the math and the science areas and, and really want to. I, I keep getting requests I'd like to go to the middle level to teach science, I'd like to go to teach math people that would really be excited about saying if we got a substitute for their classroom did for a day or two and they were th giving the small group instruction of that mm -hmm. lab experience something I, I, I read on economics. right I read in the newspaper that the teachers that are doing those science labs were getting like a thousand dollar stipend um, to take on that extra work mm -hmm. something that we could think about in, in offering and then we could have a rotation you know at the elementary so that every child gets an opportunity even the, the child who struggles because everybody's successful when it comes to hands-on um, there's so many things so I think you know what I read in the paper today kind of goes along with what you were thinking and trying how to get the kids excited and then bring it all the way up through I don't know how to excite high school kids yeah um, there's something I, I always go back to when thinking about this when we were doing the PSSA test one day um, it was um, it was I think my junior year and some students, they would flip through the test booklet, close it, and put their head down for the entire period. And I bet that happens all over the place, all over the country. And I'm wondering at what point did that child go from being excited about school and excited about learning to not caring at all? I don't know what level that was at. It's probably different for each kid. But if we can prevent that. At some point, he resigned to the fact that he was a failure. He or she yeah. was a failure. And that's what I think our goal here. It needs to be to prevent, yeah. To be prevented? Yeah. As much as they we can. They should be de spirited. Yeah. Even if they're not gifted or if they're not, college bound, yeah. mm -hmm. they shouldn't be de spirited when they leave us. Yeah. Um. That's a so, so, so those would be some things that we could come back to you and say that you know we've given it thought. We'd like to start this. You know, I can't say we, it could start for September, but it's certainly right. something we could start working on and try to start in January. Get some people vested into um, doing it at the elementary level, even at the middle school, with you know some things that you might have an idea with. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I, I think that would be Great. wonderful. And continuing with the all the car classes in the yeah. high school, I think, is how we right. excite our, our high school students. Yeah, yeah back, back to what Mary Beth just said, I, this is mid-August. I, I wouldn't yeah. worry about whether we could start it in September. And then, then back to what Carol just said, today when we heard how the, the a la carte courses are full, I think another question needs to be then how do we expand them? Mm -hmm. Because you said there's kids like right. beating down the door to get into them. Yeah, yeah for some of them they, they really took That's off. That's huge to me to hear you that. can't say every single one of them. No, not all of them. Well, right. If you remember, this, that discussion took right. place because we're trying to eliminate Trial. study halls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd much rather have them in these expanded yeah. courses than in yeah. study halls. What we also need to do is, uh, what we've tried to do, whether we were in the middle school, whether it was Rob and I, or you know, high school, Jenny and I, and I uh, educate the parents that when you're in elementary school and you start to group for language or tech or math, mm -hmm. that that group you're in can change. I don't think enough parents realize that there is movement up. And that's really important. We need to, teachers need to really promote into these kids. There's movement throughout the year. And, and we didn't care. I mean, we didn't care if it was January or February. We moved kids. Well, and that's something Connor's been talking about, is getting the kids to want to strive to be better, to strive and, for excellence. Do they know they're being moved up or Excuse down? Do the, do the children know? At the middle level, they know. Yeah. Yeah. And the high school, they know. I, I think they know the elementary. Oh, yeah. But parents do, definitely. Like, you know, to work, for the parents to work with them to understand that where you are doesn't mean that that's where you're going to be always. When I was in school, you know, if I was a bluebird, I was a bluebird. You know, I never got to be a coordinator or anything like that, you know, things like that. But but anyway, we need to do this. I mean, we really strive, even at the high school the last couple of years. I mean, we have moved kids up and down. And sometimes you get the teachers, well, our recommendation is it. But we've done a kind of an informal thing. If a parent, they say, well, the parent's pushing the kid. I'm okay with that. Because in at least 75% of the time, the child is successful. Let me ask, because I don't know, at the high school level, we're not relying on the kid to bring the information home to the parent, are we? Good Whatever. Even the fact that they could be moved up in, in, in math or whatever else. I mean, I is, the, on that. is the information going directly to the parent? Hold one second. The only reason I ask is because little kids will come home and say, Mom, I have to give this to you. Teenage kids will say, I don't want my parents to see this. <laughs> well, nothing great in, in the classes. We Teachers will go with the kids and say, we need to, you need to go. Yeah, but that, that's, that's not related to the parents. I was phone. contacted via email by the guidance counselor and the teacher yeah. when my son was recommended to be bumped down. Okay, that's what I'm asking. We is, had is, three-way dialogue. There, oh, yeah, there's dialogue. We gave it a few more weeks. We were all on board. I said, here's what I'm seeing at home. Here's what I'm seeing at the, the, the scene in the classroom. And at the end of that trial period, we all just, it right. became evident whether the child should have moved, up, yeah. moved back or kept. Sure, an individual basis. So, that yes, that absolutely. Mean, yes, that, that does, in fact, it's one of the things we identified as, good, as our strength in the communication. Yeah, that's what I'm asking, because I just want to make sure the parents are aware of these things oh, yes, and not relying on, on the students. students without. In terms of, though, the initial discussion with the student that, hey, maybe you can handle this class instead, and the student's a little bit on the fence and decides, well, I'm going to go with what I'm comfortable with rather than what I may excel in um, if I try it, those informal conversations, do they really kind of end with that student? We try not to anymore, Connor. The okay. reason being, you would know, but because you lived it, I don't, I don't know. Other okay. Things. I believe the philosophy in the past was, if you're moved up and you weren't successful, too bad you can't go back. Is that correct? That was the mindset. That is not. It should be. Now, they go up and they're struggling. The only thing I ask the parents, if they say, I want my child up. No problem. Let's work together. If there's a struggle, let's let them not die there. Yeah. Okay. That's real important. 
and our teachers are, are, are buying into that now. The first year was a little tough because we had kids going every which way during the course of the year, and so you see that, oh my lord. Yeah. But last year was, you know, really not an issue. Good. And so that's real important. That's, to that us. is. That's, that's great. You don't want people to not try because they think no. they're going to be stuck. Mm -hmm. We have to look ourselves in the air and say, everybody was given a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so we try to push them and say, okay, yeah, we believe you can do this, but listen, if it, if it becomes a struggle, let us know the teachers and we'll get you. But great. give it a shot. Thank you. Know. Yeah, that's great. And also, the one last part is. Uh, at some point, if, you know, you're just talking about math like Mary Beth was. At, at some point, at middle school, algebra one is the top. Mm -hmm. My experience is where I've been, algebra two is the top age group. Okay? Yeah. That's just food for thought. Yeah. Yeah, that could be something I know. Um, I've known people who have been in in middle school and they reached out for one and they were ready for a new challenge, but they were locked in for a new for an entire year um, just because we didn't offer that. And that's something I really haven't thought about much, but that's something I think that we should consider. There are growing consider. pains, though, when you do, because there are growing pains with numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember in the school district I worked at, in the first few years of an out of the 28th grade, 8, 9, 10. Then after like five years, you're 20, 25. So there are growing pains. Okay. Mr. Mr. Ferris, can we digress for one second? One for, second, all right. For, for the next meeting. And it was, it was based on the, the planning session this morning. Uh, Mary Beth, if you, if you could or have someone come up with these numbers, I, I'd like to see a list of all our official clubs. Okay. And, and the numbers of participants and a list of unofficial clubs and the numbers of participants. And if you could have Ms. Goss give us a list of all the athletics and the number of participants. We start talking after the meeting about if we're paying stipends for clubs that only have two people, and I'm just pulling two out of the uh -huh. air, but I mean, that, that's kind of a waste of money. And, and if we have unofficial clubs, why do we have them if they're not official? Um, and even the athletics, because at, at the meeting last night I said, I, I don't want to see this budget planning like past years where we're going to wipe out all extracurriculars. I think that's ridiculous. But it may make sense to eliminate some things that aren't being participated in. You know, it's just, it's just a thought, but I think we need numbers to consider this stuff. And yeah, there's no harm in talking about mm -hmm. it. Right. I know we wouldn't be able to have a team if we didn't have the number of students. And, um, but with saying that, because we have 11 and that's all it takes to have a soccer team, you know, are we just sitting with 11 and is that really? I was thinking yeah. more about the clubes right. than, than the athletics. The athletics, okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, I Thank you, and I do. I have to go to this other meeting. But. All right, well, Thank you. Rich is Thanks leaving for us meeting. for tonight. Quarter of. So, can we move on to AP move on. courses? I think that was a fruitful discussion. Okay. I'm excited to see where that goes. AP courses we have discussed, and we've been, you know, talking about this in in um, our administrative meetings this summer. And we are excited to be able to offer more AP classes. That is on our agenda for the 14 for the 15 16 Great. school year. How we go about it exactly. Um, is what I'd like to talk about here, and and we talked a little bit on, on the on the side of, yeah. on the side, but we were thinking that maybe some student input, teacher input as well, yes. to find out what courses kids um, would like to see being okay. offered, um, what courses teachers would like to teach, because mm -hmm. we obviously have to have someone teaching it. And I, and I do believe that all the teachers that are teaching and supporting AP classes would be very excited about any addition coming in. So that was more or less the, the steps that we were going to take, is to find out what offerings you know there, there are, to, to come back and say, Here, here's the, the gamut of them. Can we, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I but really think did. there's a, sorry. Um, something we could do, you mentioned when we spoke, 
put out a survey on the website open. I wouldn't just keep it open to high school students, but I would open it up even to some students in middle school because they're going to be using these classes down the road if we add them and include a list of all AP classes mm -hmm. that are out there, not just the ones we offer now and not just the ones we don't offer now, but all of them, and allow students to check off the classes that they would be interested in. So we can see not only which classes our students would be interested in taking, but where the classes we currently offer fit in in comparison okay. to those classes. So what I would like from the committee is just to be able to be given the go-ahead to go ahead and find out to move on this so that we can then bring back to the committee in a month or so and say, and, and maybe maybe not the September, but by, but I, uh, by October, come back and say, here's what we did. We surveyed the students. Here's, here's what we showed them. Here's what came back. Um, this is what we're going to be recommending for next year. And if we get this done by November, December, then it'll be right in line with when we need to um, put out the student handbook at the high school okay. selection book. I also think in terms of the survey, and I mention this a lot, not just for surveys, but for almost any um, component of anything really in this system and others, um, where they're, we're asking for opinions or asking for people to apply or express interest, if it could be on the student to take the survey, I don't think we'd really be getting an accurate representation if a survey was handed out at homeroom and every student filled it out because every no, student's not going to be yeah. interested. So I think that's why putting it on the website might be helpful. That way and, and um, maybe in some of the AP classes those yeah. students would be interested and that would be a good group to to start with, as well as honors. Maybe there's students that are in honors classes that would uh, have liked to have taken that at an AP, you know, yeah. an AP class. So maybe some that students with a right population to survey to start. Yeah, to start with, and then letting everybody else know that it's out there. And then the hope would be that if, or at least my hope would be that if we add some of these courses, and you have, may have some students who are in accelerated or academic decide, well, you know what, I don't. Now, instead of not being ready for honors at the highest level, I might not be ready for AP, so I'm going to try honors. Right. And that, again, keeps them moving along. and keeps them kind of mm -hmm. right. uh, learning more, and not just that, but getting excited about learning more. So that was the purpose of um, that point of, on the AP courses, and, and that we would like to continue to offer more. We want the support of the Curriculum Instruction Committee to be able to say, go ahead, bring back the information, and tell us what you're thinking. You'd like to and with offer. that, would you be able to bring us a dollar figure as to what? I, typically, it has not cost us anything staff-wise. I mean, I don't believe it, you know if we can do it with existing staff. If it can't be done with existing staff, then we'll let you know that as well. Um, what we have had to do in um, even with this past year is, is provide some curriculum writing and and the books. Right, some materials, which that, that cost was still minimal, and the AP courses that we did add this year, we were able to do with the um, staffing that we do have in place. Right. So. We want to stay on that course for right now. Right. In-house. Right. Um, so. so you have my support, at least, for this survey. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with you. Okay. And so that we can, we'll come back to you and then say we'd like to, right. these are the AP offerings that we I'd would like. I'd also be interested in hearing if there's some overwhelming demand for an AP class that we haven't got the in-house talent for, not that it would be considered, just to know right. what, what are the, what could we do? What are they asking for? What is, so we can get they know what other schools are teams. doing and they know what, I'd like them to bring in us that research and what are we not providing that we can't, be, you know, because right. of budgetary consent, can't right. constraints at this point. Great. Yeah, I think we need to <coughs> do two things. The old age, I think I forgot the other thing. <laughs> but, uh, Come on, write them down. Number, number one, we, we have to check. We have to look at how we deliver the courses. We have students who want to take more APs, but because APs are opposite APs, it's That's not. true, too. That's a fact. You can't deal with that. But my thought process is, and this might be contractual, you married back to the but this out, is it possible to have a blended AP class? They're in front of a teacher three days a cycle, in front of a computer three mm -hmm. days a cycle. So I can be running the same teacher teaching AP Euro history, AP US. So Connor Kurtz is taking AP Euro yeah. uh, days one, three, five in front of teacher X, but on days two, four, six at the lab. Mm -hmm. That's great. 
You, you see what I'm saying? A I do. I really like that. That's that's you, great. Another. You can have more. I guess student can take literally twice as many if it's if it's yeah feasible. You, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Another maybe speaking on that blended model, maybe something you could do for your honors POD classes. Right. Maybe you can say at the end of the year, hey, listen, guys, maybe you could reevaluate the curriculum and see if it can line up with the AP standards and say, oh, those is honors, POD, if you'd like to, you could take the AP test. And you know what? Maybe we're not going to give it AP credit at this level at Dan Boone High School. Maybe you will. That could be something to be discussed. But if you get a four or five on the AP test, then you don't have to take that in college. You could take a class that you're interested otherwise. Um, I don't know. Not maybe offering a formal AP, but letting the students know that they have that ability now to go out and take the test. Um, alternatively, you could turn it into AP, but... On their own time, you're saying? Yeah, or even if we could offer the test at Daniel Boone and just let the kids know, hey, you can go and do this. If you don't want it to go to the college, don't report your school score to the college if you think you may not do well. But the main thing isn't even as much the course, is letting the kids know that you can take the test. If I knew in high school that there was a way for me to take the AP political science test, I would have taken that, even though the course wasn't offered, because I think I would have gotten a four or five in the test, and I wouldn't have had to take that in college, which would have saved money, time, and I could have learned more stuff that I was interested in in college. And if there's a way that we can make that known to students, I think that could be really, really beneficial. Is there any, any criteria prior to taking the test? Megan, no. do you know why you probably, you're not? No, you, you, you can take it. You can, okay. But the number of students who are actually going to be really successful is, okay. be, is a limited number. Right. So, I mean, looking at blended, that's a thought that I think we can work through, but that could be contractual. Mm -hmm. Depends. But also, I, if, if you can't do the blended, have more offerings, but freshmen and sophomores. Right. We now AP European history. We have a freshman in that class. Right. Coming up. Good. Mm -hmm. We have a sophomore. We just signed up today. Great. So maybe we can get some of the let's say easier yeah. AP offerings that maybe push the sophomore. In. And in that case, they're not going to be overwhelmed their junior and senior Correct. years, but they're still going to be getting that. They're going to take one AP and a sophomore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know things like that. So that's good. That's great. Able to do the AP, I was thinking of it more like college course, so that it was, it's not like maybe to get around the contractual issue if there is one. Say that they took the course, those three days of the cycle, for the 45 minutes or whatever with the teacher, and then on the off days, the teacher assigned this assignment or whatever that they would be assigned to it, like say the computer lab would just be open with a staff member who just is has that as that at their duty. Mm -hmm and the students use then the computer lab to accomplish or even a, the assignment. Or even a study hall or the laptop. But you still have a teacher his, teaching. His contractual concern is not so much that, that the student's going and doing some independent work. It's can the, will there be a problem with the teacher having two, two preps, an AP European and an AP U.S.? No, see, That's that the question. Right. Right. No, like no uh -uh. That, that part of it wouldn't be the problem. It would be the person teaching seventh period two different okay so it would look like they're teaching eight classes opposed to so that that would be the one thing that we have to look at alternatively we could we could system. brand it as one class even. wasn't there something with the grading system when we had a similar discussion with connor's proposal honors 2.1 that was more was with concerned. that was more with having the the combined honors and ap kit child student in the same classroom this this wouldn't be they'd be both AP classes. The concept classes, of blending it right, is similar, is, but the method right, of doing it is different. It. Right. Okay. So there are, this okay. is a really idea of what I'm saying. There are districts out there that I've read about that are have started to blend it. They're in front of a human being yeah. mm -hmm. three or four times a cycle, and they're in the lab <laughs> twice a cycle. Two times. Right. And we have the technology. To Kind of facilitate that? We do. We, 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 yeah, we do, definitely. Great. Again, just stuff like this, I think, could really make this a a next level school. And these, these are things that we're thinking about for the next school year. So we do have Time the next to, yeah, yeah. 10 months to be working on it to, so that, I can't tell you know. You how much I appreciate these ideas. Yeah. So, so you know, we're hope I, I would say that we really don't have 10 months because we would want to have them a part of the 
course election guide for the Jan for January, February maybe right. at the latest. I don't want to go much later anymore. Right. Um, but to, okay. to be able to have those ideas now and, yeah. and, and just keep trying to add a couple of things. And the other yeah. thing that we will also look into is the world languages and how they're doing that um, at Phoenixville through um, a we can use we can use a current we can use a current world language teacher who we have employed to be able to manage a, a, a lab per se or or a, a class and we could be offering ten different world languages from there that could be through cyber and that would not be a, a, that shouldn't be a problem with our teachers union because we're not taking we're still using a staff to manage it and. What other schools have done is they've taken their world language person, as long as they're a certified world language teacher in whatever world language, they can oversee this this course, um, where we could offer Japanese, you know, whatever we it's can a do. Subscription. Yes. Service, yeah. The IT it would be a subscription per process through. Um, Stone. Or yeah, and Rosetta Stone I understand is pretty expensive, but I but have they to. They are licensed per user. Right. So Right, it would be. I wanted to learn. Japanese, it could, it could be just exactly. The way Phoenix was doing it, it's like they, sure. they are actually charging the kids a fee. Right, and they are charging fees in some schools. So that, right? Yeah. Mr. Hurley's on that, and I told him that that was something that I wanted to see being implemented in some way for the following year. Um, the one thing that was brought up was if we do look at foreign language that way. It would really be nice to be able to try to put something again in place at the elementary or at the middle level, and and maybe be able to give because we don't have any foreign language right. in, in the world. Language. right, and okay. um, and then on top of that, Blazer Foundation was excited about trying to offer something at night for elementary kids that they wanted to work something out with families and have some type of an offering. Well, but she, I mean, if that's the case, yeah. you can't have some introduction to the elementary level. And then, then nothing at the middle, down. exactly. So we might have to come back and say, if we do try to try try to do an exploratory and we're trying to use um, a, 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 yeah, teleconferencing or, or you know, a, I mean, obviously, again, the issue yeah, is right. We want to know that they have some kind of aptitude right. before we sign them up for these right. things. Right, right. But we might need to just look at what kind of a staff member we could put into that place and not necessarily being a full-time, possibly a part-time, something like that. So those are some ideas that we're going to be coming to you Great. with. All right. Okay. You. Going back, though, to these courses, and we talked about the a la carte, maybe, and this is just maybe it's a silly idea, but maybe when it comes time for course selection, you can have an assembly at the, maybe even at the middle school level and at the high school level, just explaining these new courses, and not just explaining them, but highlighting them. And almost letting kids know that these are some great new opportunities and they should be excited. I don't know if you can call it a celebration or if you can actually, maybe that's just a little dream of mine that the kids would be that excited about enrolling for classes. But if there's a way to communicate that passion, or at least the passion that the committee feels almost, mm -hmm. the students will be benefiting from these if we can do that and just let them know that these options are out there, then that's great. And even the ability to create your own course through the independent mm -hmm. study um, option. If we, we could can do that. One thing that uh, I don't think we, for no credit for anything, I think we can. And Mary Beth and I talked about it last year with Preston. That Phoenixville says their superintendent, every student will have an online experience. Right. There are free online courses. So I'm thinking about doing, once we get our study halls situated, those are maybe we were able to put in classrooms. Yeah. Get hold of Preston again and get that company where that study hall goes down to the lab and runs through. Yeah. Of course, it can be guitar, it can be online, it can be something of high interest. Yeah. That's what they do. I forget right. the name of that I don't know. Remember that? Preston's an administrator that has come in and has led our um, administrative team through a two-day mm -hmm. retreat and has uh, he does consulting on the side. Very, very enthusiastic, big about expanding things Great. and opportunities. So any way that you could take, yeah. you have students know, in school in the study hall. If you could put them in front of a computer, even if you could put a National Geographic documentary up, if you could do science experiments, if you can get a teacher, get hands on anything. Um, 
that just expands their um, their knowledge and their interest really in school. That could be that could be very powerful. But as, as Rob said, we have to do something with foreign language because the old German, French, Spanish is long gone. Yeah. Uh, I don't know said our old secretary at the, our Rob secretary at the middle school, she walked out of Twin Valley speaking fluent thing or thing. Wow. <laughs> I mean, hmm. that's worth more than a division of scholarship right now when she yeah. gets out of college. <laughs> you know. Arabic. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Sorry. And the one thing that you guys need to be aware of is that at the course selection um, process, Tom and I have had a lot of discussions about improving communication and the process and procedures and starting significantly earlier and begin that very soon. Great. Yeah, so that we can have and make sure that what we're going to implement and what students want can be communicated at an earlier pace and have time and, and improve the process. Great, thank you. Okay. All right. Next up is curriculum writing cycle, and this is Mrs. Torsha, because I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, what what I had brought to the committee last year is that we have not done in the past a good job of reviewing curriculum and rewriting it um, in a way that includes K to 12. And I guess I want to go down. Yeah, you know, I guess I want to go across first. Vertically right. <laughs> so we've, we've not done a good job of, of reviewing our curriculum and making sure that whatever we're teaching in kindergarten isn't being taught in first grade, second grade, etc. So we want to be able to start a, a, a true curriculum review cycle. And um, my administration feels that math is the first thing that we need to, to look at and get that in the line. Um, and by doing that, it means that we're going to have teachers that will be writing curriculum, collaborating together so that I have the third grade teacher working with the fourth grade teacher, the fifth grade teachers working with the sixth grade, the eighth grade with the ninth, and um, just making sure that we're touching every part of the standard that needs to be met within a grade level and that there's not too much overlap between. And how it was done in the past was Teachers were told, well, we need to write science curriculum, so go write science curriculum. And science curriculum was written without any collaboration with the middle school or the high school or you know, other grade levels. It was just more or less written. So we want to do what most schools are doing, and that is dissecting your curriculum, making sure that you're not reading the same book in eighth grade that they've been using mm -hmm. for however long as part of an important lesson in ninth grade. Yeah. And you know, so that we're not creating animosity between grade levels or teachers or, you know, colleagues, and that we are have a set curriculum and that this is what we're doing in here, this is what you need to do. How can that touch into art and or music or into the gym so that, you know, there's different components that could be brought in. You know, measurement can be practiced again in art class. Um, that was just a real good one for me to be able to pull up. <laughs> uh, but, but so we do want to start that curriculum cycle, um, which will incorporate and, and need to support teachers possibly being paid after the school day. We think that a lot of it can be accomplished during the school day, that we could set up for some substitute coverage that way. We are also looking at our in-service days, as that is mandatory curriculum writing you know, time, and then it will often filter into the summer, which is not uncommon, which we do right now. How do you choose the staff member to write the curriculum? Do they have an expertise in that field, or is it just a teacher who's been teaching the course? Um, both. And, and it's people that are invested in okay. to writing it and are truly committed to the curriculum. The standards are already there. The, the state's pretty much telling us this is what we expect a student to know by the end of this grade. It's the extra stuff that teachers are doing that we want to make sure are being done through the whole grade level and not taking away from the grade level before, after or before. And if you guys want to chime in, go right ahead. Unless you think I'm doing okay here. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> um, help me understand how math would be the problem. When we first started discussing this, the illustration was reading. And I got that. I could see that. I heard there was like fifth grade teachers assigning something that they did for, it was also assigned in whatever, sixth grade or fourth grade or whatever. But math seems so already kind of structured and concrete to me. How, how does one teacher 
teach another? You know, how, how does a fifth grade teacher end up teaching sixth grade material? They shouldn't be. And why wouldn't they if the class They advanced? shouldn't be. What our concern is making sure that it's aligned properly with where the state has us, that, that our benchmarks are matching what the state is expecting us to have the students learning um, and to really review that, that curriculum. And you can probably chime in right here because my math the state, experts. The state has moved around what the points of emphasis are in mathematics um, because of the PA core and the changes there. So some of the emphasis has changed between the grades and levels. So that's part of it. So say, for instance, in the past, students were expected in fourth grade to know how to, well, that would be a little off, but let's say third grade to know how to measure to the nearest inch. Well, maybe now that's not the case at all. Maybe they are not tested on that in third grade. That's a fourth grade skill or that's a second grade skill. So um, you just don't want to miss your target when why you're Why aren't you teachers, and this is probably really naive, but why isn't everybody going to the state site and seeing what the standards are? Why do they have to be written, rewritten by us? Well, the standards really help you develop your curriculum, but they're, they were never meant to be a curriculum. So while you want to um, meet the standards, it's, it's not a curriculum. It doesn't offer, uh, tell you exactly what your kids need to know and be able to do. It doesn't tell you what vocabulary the kids need to know in a certain grade level, what resources you may use, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So, and math seems to be where we do struggle a little bit more because we don't have the same interventions in place um, as plentiful. You know, our Title I program, we do have our basic math that, that we are grooming and making better, uh, but that's where our scores are a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. Megan, do you have anything to come in with being the... I think, in my experience, it's been... We've always looked at the standards and we've been notified when there's been changes. And we try to um, change as much as we can on the fly but to address them. But if, if you are continuously as a teacher trying to adjust to that, sometimes the communication from one grade level or one building from one building to the next hasn't always had the opportunity to occur because we're creating all this new curriculum and we have these resources and we're implementing this and we're implementing that. The fallback into okay, well, we didn't tell the eighth grade, and we've, we've improved that significantly in the past recent time. Um, here's what we're doing, and them telling us, well, we changed this, and we're doing this. But to have a formal process mm -hmm. that is K through 12 is essential, because we might have it one grade level, and, and it might have filtered down or been across the curriculum, mm -hmm. but there is repeated skills that, yes, sometimes they need, sometimes they don't. Um, but even for the high school teachers to be able to say, here's our concern, and go back this way, or here's, well, we aren't able to get to this, you know, we, we've always tried to teach this, but now the standards and the testing have changed. When are we gonna hit this, because this is a really good life skill, and to be able to say, well, okay, well, we can't do it now, but there's room in the fourth grade curriculum or the fifth grade curriculum, that's, I think, the essential piece mm -hmm. that we, mm -hmm. it's essential that you take the time to do the formal process. Not that the teachers aren't adjusting, mm -hmm. but everybody needs to know, and then there'll be more efficiency in the way. Like, very much so. And then the next, we would definitely then, the next year we would go into the review of and rewriting of the language and reading and language arts. And while reading language arts is being written, the math curriculum is going to be implemented, so that's going to be going into its second year. So each, each subject should be going into a five, is it about a five year, four year cycle, and then until we get back to math again, and then we start rewriting yeah. there to make sure that we're right where we yeah. need to be. I like that. We haven't Sometimes done we that. Need to do that. And so that's what we would like to start, and on, we're going to start um, getting our, identifying our teachers and, in each grade level and start setting up teams using much of our. Um, in service time for that, for the teachers to get together to collaborate. We, along with going from K to 12, then we're going to also be going down and just working uh, within like K, K and one, one and two, two and three, like having those grades overlap and them working together as well so that we're making sure that our curriculum is getting written straight across as well as identifying everything going down. So it's, it's, it's got to go both ways. This is going to sound um, almost, stupid coming from a member of the curriculum committee, but what does a curriculum 
um, that has been written look like in terms of scope the program. and sequence of what the the class should look like. That so that is it like. Is it a document? Is it a one-page document? Is it a 50-page no, it, document? It's many pages it's per page. grade level, okay. yeah. It, 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 takes a, it, takes, it starts with a unit, and then you break the unit down into okay. each of the things. Uh, it's, it's not a textbook, what you see in a textbook, but that's look, probably what you're the most It looks like okay. a very detailed lesson plan for a, a, a year. Okay. Yeah. So does it have times allocated for how long? Yes, how okay. long? How long? Okay. I'll what see what I have if I have anything okay. current that looks like what I really want. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that would be well, interesting like coming to this committee mm -hmm. and see what that would really let you us know. Some as we new stuff. Do we have anything that you think that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mrs. Kiesel's saying she'll get you whatever you just uh, something to see. That'd be great. Yeah. And really, it's what a curriculum I think should be. Because I get mixed up. My standards, I can picture them. I've seen them on the common core, and then what part of here? Uh, a, a curriculum so that we can say we own this curriculum. These, this is the planned set, or these are the planned set of experiences that we want our students to have at this grade level. And, that's really what you're and about. then as we're going through the curriculum and as the students are learning after the, the curriculum is written, then we look and say, do we need another resource to support the curriculum? Books do not drive curriculum. Books come after the curriculum is written, and then we look and see we need to pull from here or we need to pull from there to add as a resource. I don't see that necessarily happening within math, maybe at the high school level, maybe for some of the AP classes, once that curriculum's written. Some of the lower, like it's right. the higher level probably has a lot of stuff right. on the lower level. But a book does not drive the writing of the curriculum. Yes. Because when I looked at this Go Math, um, series that we yep. recently approved. It, it looked like it was showing up in the curriculum, example specific lessons to teach, mm -hmm. and it was also stating, tying in with, with, with which uh, standards were being met. Correct. By teaching that. And, the, and again, so that. that curriculum? No. Didn't we buy a curriculum? From no. Them? What we no. bought was a resource to be able to help <coughs> us teach the curriculum. curriculum. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. On the note of things coming to the committee, I'm not saying this hasn't ha this has happened, but I just want to note for the new courses we're adding at the high school, whether they be the Alla Carts or whether they be the new APs for mm -hmm. this year, did we purchase textbooks for those courses? We did not for the Alla Cart, but for the AP European History we did, and I know that his secretary, Tom, Mr. Henkel's secretary, is very good about finding used, used books. They were used. Okay. Well, yeah. We just need to make sure that yeah. they're coming to this committee for board approval because okay. that's something that we need it, to that's it, in the policy. It well, it, I, I, I understand what you're saying, I guess, for the formality of it because yes. that's the book that we have to purchase. Okay. For that yeah, class, just to, no just, just yeah. to see no, it. Okay. It's just that's one of the major responsibilities right. of school boards in Pennsylvania is text right. textbooks, uh, right. textbook right. adoption. Yeah. So that's been something that we've been trying to make sure that we point. like that. But the other classes, it's, it's more going to be uh, the SAT prep as a book. Students have to purchase it. Okay. It's consumable. Yeah. Okay. It's just like God says to purchase the book. That's understood. Uh, the other teachers know it's they've got their own materials and things like that. It's been really great. Yeah. And well, I, I didn't. Still right. yeah, I, I mean, didn't. It's just on those textbooks that we need to make sure that they're right. following up the change to the full board um, votes on them because that requires. It's spelled out in our yeah. know, the meetings policy. Like there are policies that require um, even six votes to approve textbooks and five votes. Like yeah. it's very. It's a big thing that. And and this this yeah. I guess. And why these weren't, why, stuff why, now, why these weren't saying, brought yeah. to you was because it wasn't really a textbook adoption. It was the, the textbook that had to go along with this well, course. Well, still, we I mean, we, we're adopting right. the course. We're adopting the textbook with it. Yeah. So, so those things need to come up here. So just moving forward, I think, like, all right. that stuff. No, that that, I mean, that was, that was my that. oversight of, of that is that it wasn't like we could go out and shop yeah. for it. So I didn't even think it was just a, it was the book that yeah, AP yeah, says yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just across no, the board, any text problem. that we're going to be introducing. Yeah. Fully engaged in the process yeah. and maybe appreciate what, what, yes. what yeah. the decisions we're making. And it's not even as much about, for me, looking over the books as making sure that we're following our own policies, the state even sure. requires yeah. us to follow. Parent says, have you ever looked at the book? And I'm like, no. And then no. they say, yeah, have to, yeah. yeah. All right. So. Thank you for filling us in on that. Um, next, we don't have anything else under new business, and there's no public comment.
Uh, does anybody have anything going around the table that they'd like to mention? Otherwise, we can finish early for once. <laughs> for some? One thing. Go ahead. I don't even know if Walt's in this committee. I'm curious with all the talk about extracurricular. Do we do intramurals? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're all, we're whole, everybody's engaged. It doesn't matter skill level. There's no cuts. There's no everybody can play. Correct. How, can someone explain to me where and how does that work? When is it done? The free period is after, after school. school. After school, at the high school, it's done after school. Or they uh, through the gym, through that department. They do a lot of uh, high interest, low athletic. Meaning, it's not like they love it. Yeah. They, it's I like that. Ben. It's it, it's one Carol word. Even the quote the jocks, both female and male. Mm -hmm. Anyway, because they run it as like tournaments. Mm -hmm. The kids decide on oh, team great. like badminton. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. And, and it is it is out to kill. I mean, it, it is very competitive, and, and they sometimes do it so that you have to have X amount of males and X amount of females per team. Mm -hmm. They do it for dodgeball. They do it for badminton. They do it for uh, volleyball. 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 Uh, it's not really that big at the middle school. Transportation is the main reason. High school, the kids drive themselves. No big deal. And elementary school, it fell off, but there seemed to more because um, I'm not really sure exactly why it did, but the interest is coming back, and it's something that I talked to Stephanie Conlon about at with, with Blazer Foundation, and that she would love to be able to support something like that. You know, have the kids, you know, be able to, you know, have some type of intramural. So that was something that we had been talking about, trying to bring that, you know, to there. We do what they call a sports club, and that's tied to the um, Pottstown Wellness Grant at the elementary, where they do at least get to stay after school, and they do it by grade level, and each grade level stays for X amount of um, days or a week or so, and they're in, in, involved with things, and the wellness grant pays for the the, the bus, the transportation for the students to be able to go back home, as well as whatever um, teacher aid um, is working. And you that's know. middle school? That's at the elementary. elementary. We, that, that's offered for third, fourth, and fifth grade. We don't, we haven't Inclusive? gone. Is it driven by uh, need? Nope, it's, it's, it's first or? come, first serve. Whoever signs up, and, and they try not to turn people away, but you know, if they only have X amount of people to chaperone or be a part of, you know, making it work, then they have to, you know. Could we also get um, attendance on those also then? Or we get through clubs, interested? I don't know at the least numbers. The I know year. it was extremely popular at Birdsboro, and I can just speak for Birdsboro. But and the high school and the high school intramurals, can we have some numbers about what kind of participation you had It'll in each really of those? Big. Sorry? It will be really vague because it's a... Uh, I don't care if they're last year's number. Well, I don't, know, I don't think they I'm kept numbers. It's, 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 not, it's, not, oh. it's not like a sign-in type thing, is it? It's much they more... They just have teams, and that's it. And, you know, and nobody is paid or compensated. No. They're that, the, still voluntary by the gym teachers. Great. It's not paid. Uh, so the record-keeping is not an issue. It's not like they have to... It's like they're doing it because they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll do it my best when like, teachers come in. Give me an about number of teams you had for badminton, number of teams you had for volleyball, things like that. And I'll see if they keep any kind of numbers for the sports clubs because I'm not a hundred percent sure that they carry over those um, those materials. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested in going forward that we did have solid numbers and what our kids were doing. Mm -hmm. At the high school level, one thing we really like is we try to feel that faculty team for every mm -hmm. teacher there are, so that they can get the teachers that they love it. Great. And it's also more fall, spring, because winter, the gym's being used for your PIAA. Mm. For what? For your PIAA sports oh, really? basketball. So, so. Right. I just think that's something really positive mm -hmm. about yeah. the oh. school system that I wasn't even aware of. Yep. All right, great. Well, our next meeting is going to be, well, it's going to be next month, either before, is it the Committee of the Whole? I believe so. Okay, before the Committee of the Whole meeting, and that'll be on the, on the website just to confirm. Um, but I guess that's it. So this meeting is adjourned at 7.20 p.m.